host. My name is Drew Larison. This is MTM. How about that little intro thing we have I today? I like it. It's funny. We've had that for Very a few nice, months. We just Michael. haven't used yeah. it, um, you know, like we do nice sometimes. It gives everybody a chance to like you snuggle in, run you know, to the bathroom, grab something to drink. Yeah. Yeah, so here we are. Munch on. Mayor Tyler Moore Show. This is a weekly show. If you've never seen this uh, this show before, we just sit down with the mayor, learn what's going on in the city of Kokomo, specifically the city hall portion. Mm -hmm. But we also have an Ask the Mayor segment um, every single week where if you put your comments in the chat or if you tell us your questions you have beforehand, questions, Absolutely. and you know he answers them live, if it's a good one, I guess. <laughs> I even answer the challenging okay. ones. Okay, yeah, it's true. Well, I didn't mean like easy. I just meant I was just teasing them. <laughs> I know there. I know. So, if you have any questions good. and you're watching this live, just leave it in the chat and we'll get it. So, uh, let's pay some bills real quick before we get started. Sure. IPT's fall sports season is here, and IPT screen printing is the place to go for all your uniform needs. Contact Kyle Faust. At 765-480-3082 for more information. 20 shirt minimum required. Check them out on Facebook. That's IPT Screen Printing. Screen printed apparel for any occasion and uniforms for any sport. Fun Factory Outlet in Indiana falls in full swing. Get oh, it? I get At it. Fun Factory Outlet in Indiana. Uh, they have customization options to fit the needs of every family. Check out the versatile swing set options and set designs that can include picnic tables, multiple climbing options, different additional slides, ramps, monkey bars, sky lofts are available as well as fun accessories like chalkboard, bubble panels, or even tic-tac-toe. Give them a call at 765-522-PLAY. Once again, that's 765-522-PLAY. Fun Factory Outlet in Indiana is located just south of Crossroads Church on 931 in Kokomo. Man, so, it almost sounds like if you can dream it. They, oh, can, it, they it, can find it a way is. to add it to a place. Yeah, that, it is crazy, yeah. the customization options they it's have. Cool. Yeah, we have one in our backyard. It's great. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Mayor, tell us what's been going on at City Hall. Oh, man. Well, uh, we uh, just minutes, literally minutes before mm -hmm. uh, we went live, uh, we finalized the uh, Halloween trick-or-treat hours right. countywide. Yep. Uh, got in contact with uh, the president of the Rougeville Town Board as well as the Greentown Town Board and coordinated. And it looks like folks were going to stick with Halloween night, uh, the, either fortunately or unfortunately. That's a Monday. Uh, but uh, backing it up to Sunday, both are school nights, and so we figured we'd just stick with Halloween. So uh, kudos and, and thanks to uh, my counterparts on the uh, both Rucheville and Greentown Town Boards, uh, Board President Lipinski and Board President Dale, uh, for coordinating that, uh, again, just momentarily or moments ago. Yeah, made it so, happen. Um, so Halloween night, the 31st, trick-or-treat hours, 5 to 8 o'clock countywide. Uh, so really be careful when you're racing home uh, after work, those that get off at five, uh, because the kids will be darting out uh, oh, yeah. right away when uh, uh, the gun is sounded uh, to start the race and um, uh, just enjoy the night. Yeah, it should Always be fun. Um, I like when it's actually on Halloween. Too. Oh, yeah. That's, that just makes it a little easier. Um, you love to see that. Yeah. Are you dressing up this year? Are you handing out candy? Do you know your role yet? Yes and yes. So I, I doubt that I'll be uh, walking the neighborhood, but uh, I'll be handing out candy and I will uh, dress up to hand up the candy. Uh, I have not uh, finalized my costume yet. Uh, so we'll see. Well, this is a show that we do on Mondays and Halloween is on a Monday this year. Yes. So there was talks so before was we did talk. the show. Should we be dressing up and do a Halloween theme? Mary Tyler Moore I show. I think a Halloween theme would only be appropriate. I agree with that. Now, now the question is like, what do we do? Yeah. What do you dress up as? I may, I may dress up as you, right? Didn't we say that? I may dress up as you. Oh, what if we swapped and I played the mayor role for the day? Oh, we could do that. That'd be great. That'd be great. Anything else going on at city hall? Uh, anything else going on at City Hall? It, again, uh, working our way through um, uh, our ARP projects, getting things finalized uh, with with a few of those. A lot of that falls into the design, uh, as well as um, the available resources uh, and such. So, working through that, um, we've got uh, a couple uh, five year plans, if you will, that, that need updated. Uh, one really by by statute uh, to assist in funding some ones our, our parks uh, department uh, parks master plan as well as um, just uh, the overall uh, city's strategic plan uh, as we uh, 
uh, wind down, get ready to wind down the year. So getting uh, things in, in line or a, a plan set up for that. Still navigating the uh, uh, things that, that need to be put in place and uh, set in motion for the uh, battery plant uh, production. Mm. If anybody's, if you've not been out back by there, off of uh, 50 East and uh, 300 North, um, feel free to drive past. There's a lot of dirt moving. It's just amazing what they've been Earth able to do. Earth movers they are out uh, there. A couple, a couple months already. Uh, pretty impressive. Uh, those folks at Yates Construction and all their subs really know what they're doing. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. cool to see that. But uh, um, yeah, and then uh, also moving along with the uh, uh, kind of remodeling inside uh, at the wastewater treatment plant. We don't like to talk about what's going on outside, but what inside uh, our partnership with Merrill Brothers, uh, getting the uh, equipment, uh, state of the art equipment in installed uh, in there to start uh, processing uh, the community sludge into a biodegradable uh, fertilizer product uh, that they've patented uh, crazy. to make available for everybody next year. So crazy. Fun Love stuff. to see that Fun stuff. innovation happening. Innovation, in I know. Bring us back to our roots right. of city of first, That's right? Awesome. Love to see it. A lot of good stuff. Well, it is, we are in the final quarter of the year. As you said, mm -hmm. we're like winding down the year as well as, I mean, as we talked about Halloween hours, trick or treating hours, I wanted to have a little fun today with some trivia. Oh, okay. And I know you're a big movie buff. So I've got some Halloween oh. themed mood, not Halloween, the movie, but, just Halloween, Halloween themed in general movies okay. or spooky movies or scary movies. I've got some trivia for you Great. that I wanted to test your knowledge on today. Yeah. Cause if you're into the Halloween series movies, I mean the actual Halloween, I mean, AMC is already on it, man. They were, they've been running oh, yeah. the, the Halloween marathons, I think since Saturday, Friday or Saturday. So already Hulu, caught a couple of them. Hulu does Halloween every year where they've got a bunch nice. of different movies you can watch on Hulu mm -hmm. and different shows like that. Okay. So all right, here are, some questions i had it pulled up okay I okay because i can see sorry the which vintage horror movie got 10 academy award nominations which vintage vintage horror, horror movie, movie. and if you know the answer leave it in the chat below which vintage horror movie got 10 academy award nominations, nominations. um vintage uh I could give you a hint. It's, I it mean, was it, 1974. I was going to say, well, okay. Would that have been, no. Yeah. Was that the original Halloween? No. Second guess. Uh, 74. Um, hmm. I was just a wee lad then. Mm hmm. Uh, 74. Or vintage. Hmm. Do you know what it oh, is? Oh, is it, um, oh, no, 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 um, 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 The Shining. Incorrect. Oh. Do you have a guess, Michael? I was like negative 20 in okay. 74, so no, I don't. <laughs> it's The Exorcist. Ah, The Exorcist. The Exorcist, the famous that is... horrifying movie, had 10 Academy Award nominations. Wow. And why that's no a big idea. deal is like scary movies and thrillers, they, they don't get respect no, cause, right. at the Academy Awards. They wow, don't, that's 10. not something I never knew that Oscars for. That's okay. good to know. All right. Uh, let's do which iconic scary movie had Johnny Depp's film debut? Um, this one's a little easier, I think. Johnny Depp's debut. Um, I mean, he was in stuff before Edward Scissorhands, but that wasn't even really that much of a horror movie. Um, the year was 1984. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another, another hand. Hmm. Young Johnny Depp. Uh, Wow, I'm over two because I can't think of what uh, early movies he's been in, especially horror we got movies. Got some people guessing in the chat. Good. Probably more Johnny. It's Depp a Nightmare Pants. on Elm Street. Johnny. Depp he was, was in, in that. that? Movie. He was must he have the been boyfriend? A very young lad. We what? can IMDb it real quick. We'll see who he played. He wasn't the. I don't think he was the boyfriend. Let's see. Nightmare on Elm. Very Street. Very cool. Yeah, that was like his big film debut. Johnny Depp, Glenn Lance. Glenn Lance. Is who he played in that movie. Hmm. Interesting. Love Interesting. It. Okay. All right, we got another one Johnny here. That's very good. Um, well, let's get a good one. 
Those two were good ones. They are. Ooh, here we me. go. Which horror movie was shot entirely on a video camera like a documentary? Uh, the Blair Witch Project. Correct. Bing, ding, 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 ding. I remember ding. that one. Yeah. That is one of those movies. We were talking That's about That's something movie. if you get motion sickness, don't watch it. Yeah, it's definitely. Like, it's real. Um, but it, it was pretty I have freaky. a hard time. See, I love scary movies. I think I've said that before. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't affect me much. Um, I've like become numb to them, which probably means I should see a therapist. But like that, I also have a hard time being scared by older scary movies mm-hmm. just cause like the special effects are so bad and like cheesy. Now when they came right. out, they were amazing. Oh sure. But, like being the age I am, I, I don't get scared by it anymore. But anymore. I mean, there's some directors now that think, okay, gore it's is true. what, is what, That's hor- what sells horror movies. And or- I would, I mean the, the less. Mm-hmm. gore and and blood and Give more suspense plot. and drama yeah i mean something Give that me. you know where there's that suspense you know, trying to figure it out and yeah you know the jump scares and but oh. also like blair witch oh by the way producer aaron hey okay. producer Michael Aaron's was here. Here i was fashionably yeah. late um but uh but like the, i remember like that was the first of its sort of like genre that was this sort of like vlogumentary mm-hmm. and it like their marketing really was like this is real yeah. This is this is a real mm-hmm. footage. This is found footage. And I remember like vehemently having an argument with a friend of mine in his kitchen because we were in high school, I think when it came out and he like was just adamant that this was a documentary yeah. mm-hmm. and that like, you know, we were we were watching like yeah. a true documentary. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, man, I really I think that's I there think was another. And then there was another one so good. done, not Blair Witch, but another paranormal activity. There you go. Yes, because that's also one of my favorite movies, scary movies, because that movie. Do you guys remember like how that became popular? It was a, such a small indie film, like that mm-hmm. literally cost less than fifty thousand dollars. Isn't that crazy? Paranormal Activity, and then it became and one of the largest huge. scary movies. Yeah, millions and hundreds of millions. It just of goes dollars. to show. But like they, it was like a crowd campaign type of thing. Oh, since it was a really Still. tiny indie movie, it only came out in like a very small amount mm-hmm. of theaters, but then on the internet, it started picking up seeing huge, people and yeah. saying like, it's the scariest movie of all time. I'll be honest. I don't think I can be tried for this now. I definitely downloaded that movie illegally and watched it in a basement by myself on a laptop for the first time. Nope. Wow. And it freaked me out. <laughs> now they I think there's nope. been like seven of them now. Uh-huh. Like they keep making them cause they keep making money. Oh yeah. You, but well, you know, great, same type of thing. It was all shot first person. Like yeah. it was all home mm-hmm. video cameras mm-hmm. or like cameras they set up in their house to catch what yeah. was happening in their house. <laughs> no. Um, I mean like if I see a movie with like a person with a sheet over their head and two like holes cut out, I'm like, <gasps> I can't sleep for days. Like I am so susceptible to scary stuff. Um, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's hard. No, no. I, I really want to watch the original now. All right. So last one. Oh, okay. This is, uh, what is the name of the iconic screaming masked person in the scream? What did they give the, that character a name? Like, what was the name of that character or that uh, uh, the villain? I guess you could say Steven. No, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Ghostface. Oh, yeah. Ghostface. Commonly known as Ghostface. Ghostface. Those are some movies I need to see too, because when uh, those when those came out, I was way too young. It was it fits into that category that I always talk yeah. about. Like mm-hmm. when a movie came out, I was way too young to be allowed to watch it, and then as I grew up, it just became like an older movie to me, mm-hmm. so I didn't have much interest in it. I need to watch all the screams. Yeah. See, that's uh, I came out. It came out at like the perfect time for me, and like yeah. weirdly, um, I know I just said I hate anything scary. I used to love scary movies when I was younger. Like, I don't know what it is. I think when we had kids, um, I, I lost my scare. But man, like I remember watching Scream way into the night having like scream marathons <laughs> great movie great movie all right so we're gonna do Very a good. different game we might do good this ones. next week too so these are famous quotes from oh. specific scary oh, movies. oh man you're bringing it all yes. out yes and i want to okay. see if you can name the movie that it's from okay some Play of them are gonna be i chat. didn't even do well yes, with your, who yeah. with the iconic movies that's you fine we'll have work. me dig deeper and some of these are going to be easy and some are going to be harder okay okay the first one I see dead people. Oh, six cents. Six I cents. love right. that movie. See, oh I'm, my I'm gosh, starting early. I love that movie. I'm starting easy. Uh, number two. Here's Johnny. I said it earlier. The shining the shining. All right. Yeah. So you can these now. Uh, let's do. They're here. 
classic poltergeist poltergeist oh, good. well go. done here. 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 Oh, ready for Caroline. this one yeah do you want to play a game Ooh. oh um now this this movie speaking of like just gore yes. yeah this movie isn't that what that bad phantasm rap. No. Nope. This movie, it gets a bad rep because the fir- there's so many of them now. Oh, is mm-hmm. that Nightmare on Elm Street? Nope. There, nope. Nope. There's so many sequels now, and the sequels have all turned into that gore, but the first one was actually just a... It's a fantastic thriller of a movie. Great plot. I went to see it on Halloween night in 2004, um, I believe. Okay. I think that's the year. Um, scariest movie I'd ever seen in my life. I remember. But like good movie too. It's great. Yeah. Great plot. Great plot. Because that's the thing. It, if I'm watching something scary and I want to respect, it has to have a good plot, which I'll get to some of my favorite scary stuff that I'm going to recommend. But do you want to play a game? Do you want to play a game? There's somebody from our team on the chat who is guessing. Who's guessing. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I give. It was Saw. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I've never seen that see, movie. I've never only seen any of those. The first one. That yeah. would be my recommendation really? because okay. all the sequels, they just turn it into what, what you've been talking just about. Like just nothing the like bloodier, the better. Yeah. It's not true. Okay. It's good concept true. though. Really cool concept. All right. I'll have to last, watch it this one. Year. last one. This is a good one. And this is one I probably did watch way too young as a kid. Um, but classic like horror movie. Mm-hmm. A boy's best friend is his mother. Oh, Oh, it's um, Psycho. Psycho. Yeah. yeah what it. a movie. Oh, Hitchcock. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, man, they, they, there was some uh, TV series they made. Uh, like it was oh, a spin yeah. Off, um, spin-off off of Psycho. I forget what it was. One that um, Bates it was also or... Sorry. Bates, Bates, Bates Hotel. Hotel. Yeah. Bates Hotel. Yeah. Great, great job. Cool. Uh, you did what you did Not better bad. on the quotes. Quotes, yep. That's okay. I'll keep them coming. Uh, Ooh, we'll be fun. doing this like all month long. I think it'll be fun if we. Oh, do that. we'll be fun. So, and also thank you to everybody, Rhonda, uh, Lisa. I see you guys in the chat playing. Thanks, along. Oh, man, Did they nail it? Did they get me. the ones? Uh, some of them. Lisa, I don't know what this response to what question this was. She said Amityville Horror. Um, I think that was the last Rhonda. Question. Okay, oh. Rhonda got saw correctly, and Heidi was on there guessing correctly as well so <laughs> Good job. Heidi. he just put whoopsie yeah whoopsie doodle it's a thing we say in okay. this yep. office don't just say i don't know that it's movie fine. um but aaron welcome to the show we hey. did talk about um <clears throat> trick-or-treating hours that just got announced pretty excited big mm-hmm. deal big deal it's a monday night it's actually on halloween which i said i'm a big fan of yep. when did you happens. did you tell the story about how uh we got a, a halloween decoration at our house no, I have not told that. Mm, well, I don't know. Do I embarrass my kids? Do they even care? Absolutely. Yeah, Are they going to see this? All Do right, they have so access to Facebook? No. We were, this is my last spooky thing, and then we'll get into some Ask the Mayor segment. So uh, a few weekends ago, we were at Sam's Club, and they, they started to have like those crazy oh, yeah. Halloween decorations, mm-hmm. right? And I let my son, who, I mean, I think we've talked about like we're a Disney family. He's into like animatronic, like all that kind of stuff. I said, sure. all right, you can pick one decoration. He is nearly seven. <laughs> He's almost seven. Yeah, I'll be seven in March. And he picked, honestly, the freakiest one. Cool. Like it is this... Uh, yeah. Nice. Uh, I forget what this Some phantom, I feel like. The I mean, that's a drive-by. Phantom. Um, and, like, it's motion activated. So, you walk by, he lights up green and, like, has this really scary, cool. deep Aww. voice. Very similar to the voice of the guy on the Haunted Mansion at yes. Disney World. Yes. Which... Uh, right. Same type of thing. Was not our son's favorite no. thing at all. My son yeah. is very self-aware um that he hates all things scary yeah he's he <laughs> yet he the selected cat. this one so this that's what i'm saying it's so my kid. It's um, my kid right there he he wanted it's me to put it together me. last weekend we got busy so this weekend i stood in the driveway for an hour got a lot of weird looks <laughs> as people watch me put together this animatronic thing so i put it up and jude immediately regrets his decision oh no oh man he hears oh, it because no. it's really loud too there's yeah. a volume knob on it so you can say how loud you want it to be he heard it from inside oh. immediately freaked out was hiding under the kitchen table oh apparently. no poor Finally guy he saw it and then he immediately screamed ran and i found him like yeah. hugging Aww. his knees under the kitchen table the poor sweet boy <laughs> yeah, he, and he says mommy I think I'm too little for this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like Aww. the tiniest it's little so voice. Oh, it's man. Just, I, I think we could try again when I'm bigger. <laughs> yeah. He, but it was just so... He like Is it finally still up came though? Did you yeah, it's up there. Oh, okay. I just we, turned uh, it on We off. turned it off. Sure. We turned okay. off the scary part. So now it's just like a large statue. Yeah. And then our exchange student, she got home later that night and I was like going to try to spook her. Yeah. Wasn't didn't phase her. Yeah. Nothing. She's really built different. She is just sure. unreadable. Really disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but like he finally got the courage to come outside and then he ran back inside. Take it back. Take it back. I'm like, you're the one that picked yeah. this one. Yep. This yep. was you. 
He didn't so follow us for more parenting tips, guys. Yeah. yeah. Driving That's down through my neighborhood, there's somebody around the corner from us that has like a, a big thing. 30 foot. Yeah. Like ghoul in their front yard. It's yeah. pretty impressive. <laughs> oh, it's, man. it's crazy. I, I've been slowly. I mean, as you probably do, like you just slowly get more and more decorations every year, you know, mm-hmm. to build up. Um, but yeah, I let Jude pick that one. And in this Perfect. morning, we were leaving for school and his, his, his statement to me was like, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to come to your house for trick or treat. <laughs> I'm like saying this you to you. Right? This is your house. He's like, I'm not coming to your house for trick or treating. I don't think I can do it. That's it was, funny. It was, really that's funny. awesome. All right. So that's enough. Uh, Halloween, Halloween for now. Uh, now we'll talk about more of that next week. So on the next week's show, um, but let's get into the ask the mayor segment. So if okay. you're watching this, if you have any questions for the mayor, leave it down below in the chat. I'll be pulling over questions. Um, this can be questions about your neighborhood. It could be questions about sidewalks. We get a lot of sidewalks questions Mm -hmm. could be talking about maybe the samsung project coming up all these things so just if you have any questions leave it in the chat below um we'd love to answer those for you today all right so the first one i have is from pam on facebook for the trees that exist on sidewalks or even trails who is responsible for trimming them the city or the property owner uh the ones on the trails the city's responsible for uh the city's responsible for those along the streets and sidewalks if they are a hindrance to traffic or become uh too much of a safety hazard i mean we'll trim them back uh close to stop signs uh so anything that ob- obstructs uh the view of uh motorists or bicyclists or even pedestrians um or again you know may pose as a potential threat if they're leaning you know too far if they're old and look like they uh, may be uh, losing branches soon sure so um it's kind of case by case if it's if it's on the property it's typically the property owners uh again unless it poses a uh, safety hazard and so we encourage folks to contact the street department and uh, they'll send a uh, guy or two out to uh, kind of do an assessment uh, of it and see if it's something that uh, the city should be responsible for or not does that include if like someone's walking on the sidewalk and they're too low and like you have to duck and move your way out of the tree um it if it's like a downtown it, sidewalk if it could yeah i mean if it's if it's low enough yeah okay yes. so if somebody has those think. Which department do they street department? It'd be street department. So same department. Like, but you can still call my office and we can get them directed uh, over there or get the address and and we can uh, deploy them. So four, five, six, seven, four, 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 just because I don't know the streets uh, number offhand. Gotcha. Okay. sweet. Um, Next question. question, Yeah. Next question on Facebook. Okay. So the marathon gas station on South of Fountain and Boulevard gas pumps are roped off with caution tape and it's rumored. We're going to get down to the truth here. It's rumored that the underground gas tank was leaking unknowingly oh, into the so sewer system. Actually, Washington and Boulevard. Oh, okay. So at Washington and, and LaFountain kind of converge yeah, you know, right, right there by yep. Coffee Junkies and yeah. um, you know, the McDonald's and everything by IUK. But uh, but yeah, it's actually uh, South Washington and Boulevard. You're right. Yes. So um, there was reported two weekends ago a gasoline leak. So I, I know when it went out on social media, it said there was a gas leak. It was not a natural gas leak. It was actually a gasoline fumes that had worked their way into the uh, sewer system. So the gasoline, <clears throat> I mean, uh, one of the tanks uh, did have a, a small leak in it, and it was uh, leaking into the ground. It wasn't actually leaking into uh, the uh, sewer, system. sewer system, but because the sewer system, I mean, because they're perforated, I mean, the, the fumes were working their way in and then uh, working e- either direction uh, into the um, lower levels of, of the homes along Boulevard, which a few of the residents uh, were asked to uh, evacuate their homes, you know, for the evening as they addressed that. So yet uh, IDEM was on it, EPA was up. I mean, so it was an all hands on deck and kudos to uh, Chief Frazier and the Kokomo Fire Department for their quick response and actually standing guard, if you will, uh, throughout uh, the evening for a good 36 hours, um, again, with the uh, potential of, of fumes collecting, 
too much in one area and, and causing an issue. Uh, but then also kudos to our wastewater uh, treatment folks, uh, Dave Jewell and his team that uh, were on the spot and, and again did the same thing, addressed the situation for a, almost a good straight 36 hours uh, as they um, identified uh, where the uh, issue was coming and then working with the uh, property owners and gas station owners to mitigate the situation. So gotcha. Well, there was, there was also a, a second part to this as well. Okay. What are the consequences um, that a business may face for causing this sort of environmental pollution or what precautions does the city take so this doesn't or won't happen again? Yeah. So a lot of times when um, businesses, uh, uh, open and such there are inspections made and you know in this case you know with with gasoline tanks there's um indiana department of uh, transportation uh, that's uh, that's involved uh, epa gets involved and so there's inspections that are done uh, on situations like that um, the city has uh, our inspect our inspections and code enforcement uh, that uh, uh, also inspects uh, certain uh, when construction or remodeling is done uh, to approve that. A fire department has a fire inspector uh, or two that uh, also goes and checks for safety issues and such. I mean, so there's a lot of things in place, but I mean, it, uh, accidents happen. I mean, that's what it was. It wasn't that they would, had done anything yeah. out of sight. There was a, a change of, of ownership. Um, so when um, we, when things were done, there, it could have been uh, something that or just you know, a different grade of fuel in a, in a different tank that, you know, uh, you know, had aged, but, um, there are those, uh, things in place. And again, when a situation arises as it did, I mean, it's a team effort of city fire state, uh, and even federal that, uh, that got involved to address it and, and addressed it, uh, very well. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is a concerning thing, mm -hmm. driving by a gas station and see caution tape for multiple days on end. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing that wasn't the first time you've heard that question. Well, no, I mean, it's kind of directly, yes, I mean, in, in that manner. But there are, I mean, there's been other times that we've been asked, okay, well, but, so I want to open a business. What do I need to do? It's like, okay, well, you got to submit, you know, this and, and design plan and it's got to go through, you know, site plan typically gets you know, approved by the planning commission, you know, and then there are inspections. I mean, so our uh, inspection and code enforcement have to sign off on it before somebody can open. Uh, they have to get a certificate of occupancy for that. Same thing with firefighters. Got I mean, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of uh, checks and balances in place to help assure that um, what's uh, what they're opening and because they'll typically have clientele that folks are going to be safe and things are going to be done accordingly. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's something I remember when we got into this building, um, the whole, uh, fire, mm -hmm. what do they call sprinkler system, sprinkler system, yep. all of that had to be done. And, um, right by that gas station she was talking about, there's actually a new restaurant being fully constructed over there. Yes. Yoke Cata -cata social corner. Table. Yoke social tables over there. Not that I'm like, Hawkeyeing their uh, their social <laughs> media to see when they're open because their photos Looks look unique. delicious. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Hopefully, it's not one of those like fast food expectations and reality thing. You, yeah, I keep looking at it. Like the photos are so lovely that I'm like, if these are stock photos from like a, a California restaurant, and then I show up mm -hmm. and they serve me like an egg near toast, I'll be very sad. <laughs> that would be a sad moment. <laughs> but the, the photos there you are go. really really beautiful. So Speaking I have super food, high hopes. Did you see the McDonald's announcement? <gasps> do you so like nostalgia? I do like do this. Like oh, the, the, the little um, Happy Meal toys? No, there's no. adult oh, Happy Meals. Adult Happy Meals? Oh, yeah. With like a I Big Mac meal this. or oh. chicken nuggets. They're, they're Happy Meals for adults. And like they're just pulling on all of our heartstrings. Beautiful. Uh, that's not the McDonald's news I'm talking about. I'm talking about the potential return of the trick or treat buckets from. That's true. Ooh, well. Okay. That's, they're pulling all the nostalgia. Once right again, now. not that I'm Everybody's. eagerly watching McDonald's social media. Well, nothing um, wrong with that. Rumored to return October 18th. I may or may not have it in my calendar. I love that. Nice. I'm really little, excited about it. I, did, I don't remember that part of McDonald's uh -uh. childhood. But you uh, don't the little witch meals. Yeah. And the, like the little witch holder and then the pumpkin and the ghost. Oh, yeah. That's what I trick or treated. Like little lids too. Yeah, so my, does, my do life. the adult Happy Meals have toys? Yes. Yes. Really? There's there was something a from a flea market because I 
again, while I may have been Googling so the... they went to flea markets and no, no, bought no, a bunch no. of it's vintage like a, no. McDonald's <laughs> toys. You always see that. Let's see. Cactus oh. plant flea market box? Yes. The cactus plant flea market is in the house with a limited edition box design and collectibles. Your faves like Big Mac and 10-piece chicken McNuggets with a side of art? Yes, please. So I think you get... Like these are your toy options. I wish I could be a pulled grimace out of with right four now. eyes. Okay, I, yeah, I guess. what am I, I missing? Know. And hamburger with know. four eyes. But they're adult Happy Meals. All That's right, deal. Yeah, I I'd love to see to that. Get oh, one just to see. We are clearly excited about two different sides of McDonald's, but um, famously, you and I have not taken our children to McDonald's very much. Just, just I don't even really know why. We just haven't. Um, but. I am so ready to bring them Happy Meals if, in fact, they can get a little a little witch tote off the boat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, man. The it makes pale. it worth it. Marketing is a great thing. Isn't it? Hey, I wanted to talk about um, a few things that I guess that we've talked about in the past and just like get an update on it. Okay. So I know you've been working on budgets for next year. Yep. Which are finalized. They are finalized. Yep. I know people are going to ask, so I, I might as well as ask as well. How does the ambulance service and the whole uh, fire department mm-hmm. over time, how did that end up in those budgets this year? Because those have been hot topics in the past. Right. So knowing that in order to adequately and efficiently bring back uh, an ambulance in service, we need bodies uh, so as to not uh, force scheduled overtime and continue to eat away at that uh, portion of the budget. Um, the additional uh funds that were left over after uh, the 2% raises to the uh, non-contractual employees and then satisfying the uh, raises that are in the uh, three uh, contractual uh, agreements with those bodies, police, fire, and the ASME workers, um, that those additional funds, which equated right about 300000 all went to uh, the fire department so they can uh, add three additional bodies. Now, I know um, there's been a few uh, comments on social media. It's like, okay, we had the report, says we needed seven to eight. Why are we only adding three? Baby steps. I mean, we, you know, it, it for, you know, in, it took 12 years uh, for them to dwindle away from 122 firefighters down to. 84 or whatever they you know mm-hmm. were looking at and so in order to work our way back up and again back then the property tax caps didn't exist and so without jacking up tax rates um you know or anything that uh, uh, was staying within the statutorily permitted uh, growth quotient for um, tax revenues with i mean we're working with what we've got uh, we didn't trim too much from uh, any other departments uh, budgets because they all need uh, what I mean, the budgets for next year uh, almost mirrored uh, what they were this year, again, because of the availability uh, from the total AV that was reported uh, by the county to the state. Um, so, uh, again, knowing that street department still needs new trucks, the street department still needs, you know, their their bodies, you know, the wastewater, you know, same thing, resources, and such, I mean, so as to not um, really hinder or cripple another department in order to focus on a specific one. Uh, they all pretty much uh, mirrored last year's, but again, that additional uh, overage went to uh, the fire department to at least next year, give them the ability to add three additional ones so that we're working our way up to the uh, seven or eight that the study showed needed to uh, actually go to uh, trucks to have uh, the coverage that uh, that study, as well as the national uh, standards that um, fire departments uh, operate under or try to operate under, um, but then to, uh, again, slowly work toward uh, a staffing level that would allow adequate numbers on the trucks as well as an, uh, an hopeful ambulance. So we're getting there. Long answer, but we're getting there. Gotcha. And so it sounds like the hiring is still maybe the priority issue Mm -hmm. of firefighters and things like that. Tell us again, I know there's been efforts on the police side. What are those extra efforts possibly happening on the fire side to re recruiting more? 
Is it increased pay? Is it sign on? But I mean, what's, yeah, we're, you know, I mean, how are we helping that working on pay to be able to uh, compete with other markets? Cause uh, I mean, a lot of the um, donut communities, especially in the North side of Indianapolis, the, the Noblesville Westfield, you know, Fishers, I mean, with the uh, tax base that they have and the amount of uh, tax revenue they're able to bring in, uh, they do offer um, higher wages for uh, firefighters and police. And so we run the risk of, of uh, losing out either recruits uh, that are interested in applying or current uh, police or fire that could then lateral transfer down if there's availability. Um, I mean, it's 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 tough. It's the uh, same thing that unfortunately Tipton and Peru and even uh, some of the other uh, cities around us are dealing with in, mm -hmm. in potentially losing some of their staff to uh, to Kokomo. But but yeah, so looking at both uh, police and fire, what we're running into as well, even though you know, we like to boast that we've hired you know, 31, 32, you know, police officers since the beginning of um, uh, 2020, um, because there are so many that have uh, that have retired, then it's the same thing with the fire department. I mean, we, we can't, I mean, we're losing uh, firefighters as quickly as we're reloading. And so just playing the catch up game and get to the point that, you know, we've got, you know, younger uh, population of both so that as we continue to add, we're adding to the numbers as opposed to replacing. And so that's where, and wherein lies the struggle as well. Well, so, uh, and, and I completely hear that and understand that. So then what is the, you know, anticipation for next year with regarding the ambulance services that we will keep, we'll hire three, we have budget to hire three, and then perhaps the following year, another three, like Which I guess. Which get us to, yeah. So, what's the timeline on when that ambulance, because I know we'll, we, you will oh, continue, no, we'll continue to, to, to get yeah, questions. And it will continue to get hammered about it. And of course, sure. you know, at this point, you know, because we've been trying to work to a point that, that we can, if, if we get to a position where we're uh, able to bring it back in next year, there's going to be those credits like, oh, he's just doing it because it's a campaign year. Oh, <laughs> just, you know, so be it. I mean, you know, if it happens to fall at that point when we've you know we gradually worked up so be it you know criticize you know us uh, all you want but if we're able to get it to that point and it may be something that you know once we get halfway through the year we see that you know overtime uh, numbers uh, are considerably less than they have in these last two years again with uh, the amount of folks that you know that were sick and out due to covid you know they're out due to injuries or surgeries you know such a you know if, if the overtime number is something that we can you know appropriate money you know to um, adding or focusing on um, overtime to, to staff an ambulance you know maybe halfway through the year or you know bring on a couple more bodies you know then then so be it but um, you know just because it's not back doesn't mean you know it hasn't been you know, part of the priorities of that department of what we want to provide to the community. We just well, and it, can't it flip sounds the switch like, and do it. I mean, from those, for, uh, you know, from those rates, right, you're adding three bodies uh, with the additional $300,000. Like if you do add eight bodies, we're talking darn near a million dollars, right? right. Like yeah, it's to on the to, average of, uh, close to $100,000 per firefighter. Yeah, including you know, for, benefits, for the benefits training, and et cetera. Right. Yeah. Um, so... That is a lot. So I guess I can mm -hmm. I can see the the sort of thought process there through like gradually adding that. Um, and then this is probably a dumb question, but like do Never we? Dumb question. Oh, there are dumb questions, but um, <laughs> yeah, there are dumb questions. <laughs> right, but um, do we tax at the maximum amount allowed by the DLGF? Yes. Okay. Okay. Is that is yeah, that so common? The, do the, the, do most municipalities tax at the at the yeah. tax cap? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So in order, yeah, just to maximize tax revenues. I mean, because you know, I know. You know you know, even our city, you hate to see property taxes go up. You hate to see, you know, um, rates increase, you know, with, uh, you know, wastewater, we're getting, we're doing an increase of the, the wastewater rate, um, in order to help mm -hmm. pay the $20 million cleanup and then $25 million, mm -hmm. you know, uh, next phase of the long range control plan of separating the storm water and then sewer lines, um, you know, that, um, Despite, you know, those, I mean, Kokomo actually has, you know, is a, a very affordable place to live compared to other uh, communities. And so, um, yes. Gotcha. Someone gotcha. in the chat asks if you're looking to raise taxes, Aaron, or you'd like to see the taxes raised. No, I guess I'm not saying that. What I am saying is like 
and we've talked about this a little bit before, like the money has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. And so your options then are raise taxes, uh, which no one wants to see. So, but there's a, I mean, there is, you know, as opposed to being on property taxes, there is a, um, a, a, through income tax, which again is part of the um, benefit of that we see in, in landing a deal similar to you know the battery plant. I mean, any mm-hmm. type of development is going to bring jobs. You think oh, it's going to bring jobs where they come? Well, you know the the folks that, that live in you when you earn the money in in that county. I mean, you're going to be able to to get the income tax, which again economic development income. Mm-hmm. So edit. There's a um, a, a co-ed or a county option income tax, and typically the county option income tax goes towards law enforcement or first responder. And so right mm-hmm. now there's a there's a um, county option income tax in place that, that goes to support the jail. And, and so, county option that co-ed is if if they live in Howard County or if they live in an uh, an adjoining county. Sorry. What you earn in Howard County. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So um, so that's where. Uh, I mean, there's there's the talk of, I mean, again, well, how are we going to fund the fire department? How are we going to get more in? There's the, you know, the idea that, you know, we could add, um, you know, a, a tenth of a percent to the county option income tax, which, as I understand it, the county would have, the county council would have to uh, approve uh, increasing that, um, that that could then, you know, a portion of that could then be designated to fire protection to put towards, you know, additional bodies or the ambulance. And so that's something that um, has been part of the discussions that's come from the uh, recent study as well. So there are options outside of the property tax, but the property tax have the cap. Um, outside of that, it's what uh, is, is typically passed by the local you know, municipalities. Sure. And again, I, you know, I, I don't ask those questions. I, it's more of a, a an education, mm-hmm. you know, like where where are the options for this money to come from? Mm-hmm. Right. Because I know there's there's a very loud contingent of folks who say, like, hey, we need this. And yep. your answer is we don't necessarily have the money available right here right, right now without taking on more debt. Yeah. We had a, um, a question in chat actually from Dominique says, so the county tax doesn't go to anyone right now, but the jail question mark? that that. County option income tax, yes. Gotcha. So that's a specific type of... Specific, yes. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Um, And the next thing I want to talk about that is just a been a topic is actually one of your guarantees at the beginning of the year. And it was, I said, what are you... Oh no, my box is a dirt. You box is (laughs) a dirt. (laughs) Yeah. So what's going on with the downtown hotel and convention center? Uh, As I've mentioned before i mean we're getting or as close as we've ever been um especially with the announcement of of the battery plant (laughs) um i mean the the developer uh is 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 very uh interested excited um he was actually in in town last week and wanted to drive out past the site and and such and everything so um he is definitely more intentional on in making something happen, seeing the benefit of, of having uh, that hotel uh, downtown, uh, as well as a, a conference center attached to uh, the hotel. So um, in the process of getting things papered, as they say, uh, so that uh, we can finalize uh, the, the plans and development of that. And uh, unfortunately, was hoping to break ground this November so that I could have an hey, additional box of dirt. You got uh, a month. Well, no, I'm being told it's probably March or April. Oh, man. So. As I recall, and we, maybe we'll find the clip interest of that. You said you would go out too. with, uh, if you had to, you would go out with a shovel and a box of dirt. I and, might have to. And yeah. you would. I might have to. I think, and, and, the, and the thing <laughs> is, you know, at, at this point, it's like, well, we got to be sure. We got to be sure. I would, I think I could comfortably go out and dig up a little bit of dirt knowing that <laughs> it's going to happen. It just wouldn't be official. Well, Dom followed up in the chat. Dominique says, do we need, do we need him to do the hotel project? He'll just do it. He says, perfect. Who Dom will Dominique Dom. Williams. He just says he, oh. he'll do the hotel if they need him to. Okay. <laughs> perfect. Stay. We'll, we'll let you know if we need help. Dom will get you that box of dirt. He'll get that box. That's, of dirt. That's the guarantee there. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Perfect. Are those the, the big topics that, you know, like people are kind of, always asking about the most i think so right now i mean we're you know, before long uh we'll get into i mean we're getting close to leaf season so as soon as the leaves start falling we'll have uh, yeah. those uh those uh times uh, listed um does the city clean gutters too because i need somebody to do that um, Truth. 
No. The answer is no. I don't know. <laughs> Are there, I, I was asking this to Drew. Just put it on my property tax bill. So, hey, it's, perfect. It's fine. Yeah. You just raised taxes, Drew. <laughs> yeah. Just for me. Yeah. Just for you. Yeah. Chat, the chat's going to go nuts. Um, so are there, I, I've always wanted to know this. Are there things that you wish people knew the city did? Um, like, Oh, there's a ton of things that, I mean, a ton of things that, you know, as I came, came in and, and took office, I was like, Oh, it was like those aha moments. Like, yeah. ah, I get it now. I mean, so like, I thought of that when you were talking about, um, cutting limbs, which I guess like that makes sense, but I'm like, Oh yeah, the city does do that. I mm-hmm. bet there's a bunch of other things that the city does that are like, Oh man, I wish everybody knew that. Mm-hmm. Got anything yeah. come to mind? Uh, well, I mean, you just hit it there. I mean, a lot of those common areas between Stole the sidewalk, uh, between the sidewalk and the street, there's grassy areas. I mean, a lot of folks are like, uh, that's not mine. I don't want to, I don't want to maintain that. And so there's some, especially if they're businesses mm-hmm. that think that, you know, that, that they only own up to the sidewalk or it's not theirs to, uh, maintain. Um, there's, I guess the, the amount of, uh, equipment that we have and, versus what we would like to have to be able to do more with what we have, uh, whether it's street paving or reconstruction of that. Um, the, um, I guess you know, with what's involved with uh, curbside recycling, I mean, that's not as, that's as simple. That's thing. That's not as, yeah. as simple either. I mean, you know, because they're, and again, and, and at no fault necessarily of their own, it could be ours as, as well for not having additional or follow up education on what goes in and what shouldn't go in. I mean, a lot of the recycling that uh, is compromised due to trash being in there or others that yeah. ends up going to the landfill anyhow. And again, what folks don't realize if, if you if you're using your recycling tote as additional trash, or you've got stuff in there that doesn't need to be in a compromise of the load. I mean, the city pays roughly forty, forty eight dollars per ton to process trash and then about seventy six dollars per ton to process recycling. Mm-hmm. And so if you take something to recycling and you pay seventy six dollars a ton for what's dropped off and they're like, eh, it's compromised and it goes to the landfill. We're just now paying almost twice as much for a load of trash than we did just trash itself and so yeah so know. there's a don't know things. that we don't know yeah yep don't yep. Know we don't know i will tell you you know this taught the show has taught me uh, more than anything is that you because you pay by the ton uh don't throw out liquids guys don't yep. do it don't do it yep. it makes you pay more so it's true so that's 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 what i've taken away from this show guys um i i hope i hope you, you feel good about that Thank mayor you. see She's not trying it. to raise taxes. She's trying to help with the She's trying to help, too, yeah. You know? I am. I am. Don't mm-hmm. your, it's a good uh, citizen right there. Thank you. Uh, also, Dominique, by the way, he's just blowing up the chat now. He says, oh. Markland looks good. So Great. That is a hear. road compliment. Can road compliment. I love it. First just one. Just wait another, uh, a few more weeks until Park Avenue in front of, uh, from Haynes all the way to Washington gets done. That'll be nice. That'll be nice. He also wants to know, what are the qualifications to get in the, an additional trash bin? So I'm guessing tote, like trash. Um, we have talked about this today or before. You'd have, yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Be, good luck on getting an additional recycling bin. That's what that's I was told. Oh, recycling. Well, I mean, recy- I mean, we've got we've got a ton of recycling ones, but trash totes. I mean, we're sh- we're short on supply, and a lot of that's uh, we've had a bunch on order for COVID months. Change. But um, we try not to. You've got to have uh, seven or more. Uh, individuals in a particular household in order to kind of qualify for the, the second trash tote. Um, otherwise, they typically don't bring them out. There you go, Dom. You this need is, either short on. This Dom is unrelated, seven. but um, our art director, Michael, um, spent part of his summer in Korea, and he told us the other day that uh, in Korea they have community uh, totes for food waste. Um, and yep. that the, the Korean culture is, is uh, very thoughtful and very meticulous about not wasting food. Um, but they are open air yuck fests um, mm. that are that are just but only for food waste so that they are uh, disposed of properly without leaving a larger environmental impact than uh, than they need to. I thought that was really interesting. It is oh, interesting. Yeah. They're next level that. over there. Yeah. The things he's taught me about what South Korea is doing, their next level. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. Okay. Yeah, it was very interesting. He's also I mean, a really good well, barbecue. We so. <laughs> their next level barbecue, too. Korean sure. barbecue. Have you ever had Korean barbecue? You'd love it. We I, should go. We should go. Because there's this place okay. in Fishers. Cocoa Bros. 
And the, the grills on the, like you cook your own meat on oh. the table. I'm telling you, you it's would a love fun it. time. Okay. All these different sides. It's a great time. Love that. Anyway, so thank you for watching <laughs> and sending in those questions for the Ask the Mayor segment. I had a good discussion today. Love yeah, to see Yeah, very it. good. Uh, thanks for jumping in the chat, people that did. Um, yeah, and just thanks for watching this uh, another episode of the Mayor Tyler Moore Show here on the Kokomo Post. Um, we so. do this every single Monday. If you have any question, leave it in the chat. We'll get it next Try week. Try to. Every once in a while, I throw a little That's wrench in fine. it, and I apologize. But it thanks, folks, fine. for running. It happens. You're a mayor. You Working know, it, with it us. It happens. Yeah, no big deal. Thank you for okay. watching. Like I said, if you have any questions, leave them below. We'll get them next week. And if not, we'll just... See you next time. Okay. Thanks for watching, Kokomo. Yep. Have a uh, great week. Oh, we're gotcha. not leaving yet. Oh, no. oh, we are not leaving. Oh, no. yet. Long well, it's. I, I mean, that. it's it's Halloween, and I was gonna. I was I was gonna come uh, with a joke uh, in regards to skeletons, but it wasn't that humorous. <laughs> Aaron really liked that one. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll be back next Monday at around 3, 3.30 for another episode of the Mayor Tyler Moore Show Live. We'll see you there. See you, Kokomo.